السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم افتح علينا افتح العارفين علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين Last week, uh, we talked about fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said that fearing Allah does not give a person the courage to transgress. It actually stops a person from transgressing. And we said that if this is not attained, then this is not fear. It is only just thoughts. It's only imagination that uh, has no value. We also mentioned that when fear becomes complete, when fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes complete, it creates disinclination from this world. So a person would not be attached to any of the vanishing pleasures of this vanishing dunya. And this is referred as zuhd, which is actually our topic for today. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدٍ خَيْرًا زَهَّدَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَرَغَّبَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ وَبَصَّرَهُ بِعُيُوبِ نَفْسِهِ So, this is what Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said in the hadith. When Allah intends good for a servant, he creates disclination in him for the world. He creates a desire uh, within him for the hereafter. And he exposes to him his faults. So his heart is not attached to this dunya. His heart is free. His heart is ready to receive the light of Iman and the light of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the heart is pure. And he, when, when the heart is pure, then he, he gets the desire for, to, to prepare for the hereafter. Because he wants to be of the winner's group on the day after. He wants to be of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, Radiyallahu anhum wa radu anh. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. What else? So, what else? What other things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give to that person? He will expose to him his faults. So he cares only about his faults. He wants to try, to, 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 he tries to fix these faults. If he has done anything bad for people, then he would uh, fix those problems. So he worries that death might knock at his door any time and he's not ready yet. So this is if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends good for a servant. He puts him away. He, he makes him away from this dunya, from the adornments of this dunya. So it will not deceive him at, as it deceived a lot of people. Now, if we ask ourselves, what is the reality of Zuhd? And uh, so, so Zuhd, by uh, as we said, it's ascetism, and it is the the reality of Zuhd is turning 
the heart away from the worldly from the world gladly despite possessing the ability to acquire it so a person can have it it's not that he cannot have it and he is okay with that no a person can have the 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 uh, the worldly uh, issues everything the adornment of this dunya it's it's easy for him to get it but his heart is away is away from that uh from loving or from being deceived with this dunya so the root of the word zuhud actually the root of this word is the knowledge and radiance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places in the heart of his servant until his chest expands and it becomes clear that the hereafter is far superior and everlasting than this dunya so the relationship of the world in comparison to the hereafter is much less than the relationship between a rag and a gem between something that's trivial and something that is very precious so this is the root of zuhud when someone practices zuhud then it means that he takes from this dunya only what suffices to be on this on his, on this journey of going to the akhirah and he keeps only the necessary provisions for this journey well it's a journey and uh with for each journey that we take we uh we do get we do prepare for some provision to help us along this journey but when practicing zuhud we keep only the necessary provision for this journey now what are the the necessities in this world there are food housing clothing and these so uh and and the only uh the these are the basic stuff actually so the highest zuhud of food is to suffice one uh, meal a day so one meal a day will will be enough this is zuhud then one should not keep anything for the next day and we know that sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they used to have their food just for one day and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his servants ya abdi this is what uh, close in 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 the meaning i did not ask you to for the worship of tomorrow so that you ask me for the rizq of tomorrow okay so this is the highest zuhud of food is to suffice on one meal a day as for the type of food the highest level is to eat the food that uh, will grant you strength and this strength will be needed to help a person to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never throw away food collect your leftovers and give them to a person in need to a homeless person if you are invited to a party with foods being served then put in your plate only the amount of that you are sure you will be eating do not waste food teach your kids to respect the blessing of food 
Teach them not to throw, throw food in the trash. Teach them that even if we have the money to buy all types of food, but Allah might take our health away and we will not be able to eat it. We will not be able to enjoy it. So it's not the money that issues, it's the uh, spirituality of having it that matters. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, حسب ابن آدم أكلات أور لقيمات يقمن صلبه فإن كان لا محالة فثلث لطعامه وثلث لشرابه وثلث لنفسه So this is the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم He says it's enough for the son of Adam to eat a few morsels to, to strengthen his back. If he eats, then he should have a third of his belly for his food, a third for his drink, and a third for his breath. When someone eats, he should not be over, over filled with food. No. No, no stuffing, no overstuffing. Just eat, eat wisely. So a believer knows that he eats to live and not that he lives to eat. So it's not, uh, it's uh, when someone asks, uh, are you on a diet? He says, I'm on a seafood diet. And he means I will eat all that I can see. It's not a seafood by itself. No. So we have to practice good in food. We have to respect food. We have to eat only what strengthens us uh, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we also mentioned that of the necessities, it's to have a house. It's to have a decent house that has only the necessities to live. So. It's good to have money. It's good to, to be rich. But you have to understand. It should not be in your heart. It should be only in your pocket. You should use the money for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to give sadaqah. We have to give uh, charities. We have to help people. We have to, we have to do the right of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala over us in this money that He has given us. So when we, uh, when we live in this dunya, we don't want these things that we are going to leave one day, be in our heart. No, the rich will live. And the poor will live. That one will live in a palace. And the poor will live in a, a cottage. Who is happy? The one whose relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is strong is the happier of both of them. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam had a house of straw. And they said to him, you can buy a house. You can, uh, sorry, you can build the house. He said, you see this house? This is way too much for a person who is going to die. What about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The bed mattress for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was made of a leather case stuffed with palm fibers. These are prophets of Allah. These are, these are the message, messengers of Allah. And when one time, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he offered him dunya. But he said, no. I want to be a thankful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another another necessity of this dunya is clothing. Don't have a lot of clothes. 
sometimes if you open a, the word uh, the uh, uh, closet of a person, then you will feel that the the stuffed clothes inside is going to pop out. So what do you what do you do? Remember that when you buy a new item, then you have to donate an older one. Do not stack clothes that you are not going to wear. Once a friend of Allah uh, bought a new shirt and he liked it. When he wore it, he he felt so so happy that he owned it. He felt that its beauty captivated him. It attracted its heart. You know what he did? He took it off, went out, and gave it to, to the first poor person he, he met. He does not want his heart to be connected to something that will affect, affect the heart. He wants his heart pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such are the people of Allah who fear that their hearts are inclined to anything in this dunya. And it was mentioned that there were some of the Sahaba, uh, some of uh, some there were there were some patches over uh, the kurtas over the clothes of some of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They understood the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa amwalikum wa lakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. God does not regard or he does not look at your externals or at your richness or whatever. But rather, he looks at your heart. He looks at your deeds. This is what matters. Now, if we ask ourselves, what are the stages of Zuhud? Are there stages of, the, of Zuhud? Of course there are. And people uh, range on those stages as per how their heart is attached to this dunya or not. So the first stage is called the zahud, which means compelling oneself to, to disincline. What does that mean? It means that it means that even uh, when uh, even though a person inclined to the world, he forcefully tries to make himself disinclined. He wants to disattach himself from this dunya. So he prevents himself from attaining the, uh, the uh, vanishing world. He doesn't want this world. He, he He's looking for the Akhirah. So he tries, he forcefully tries to make, to make himself disinclined. This is the first stage. In the second stage, we find a person possesses an aversion to the world. And he is completely disinclined from it. He understands uh, that it's not possible to combine position of this world and the bounties of the hereafter. So uh, he happily forsakes the goods of this world and attains the bounties of the hereafter. Now, what is the third stage? The third stage in there, uh, a person does not incline towards the world, nor 
does he possess a version from uh, uh, from it? In fact, no position, non non position, uh, pos uh, uh, having position or non position is equal to him. It's equal in his sight. So neither his heart turns towards it with desire nor with disdain. Aisha radiallahu anha was once given a big amount of money. She did not like that. She did not hate it. But what did she do? By the end of the day, she had given all of it away. Zuhd in dunya. Money is not in the heart. It's in the pockets. It's in the pocket, but it is to be distributed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fully understands what Allah has mentioned in Surah Al-Qasas, Ayah 60, and he wants us to understand it. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَمَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Whatever thing you people have been given, it's only for the enjoyment of worldly life. And it's an adornment. And what is with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be better for you, will be everlasting for you. So, again, do not get your heart attached to anything in this dunya. You're going to leave it. Get your heart attached to the good deeds that you are going to, to, to do. Do not compete in this dunya. Do not compete in this vanishing dunya, but compete in how many rak'ahs your friend has prayed at night. Compete with how many ayahs he memorized uh, uh, of the Quran. Compete with how, how much zakah he paid, how much sadaqah he paid, how good he was to his neighbors, how good he was to his parents. This is what we should compete on in this dunya. So, why would we do that? Allah has told us that in Surah Luqman, in Ayah 31, He said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ وَاخْشَوْ يَوْمًا لَا يَجْزِي وَالِدٌ عَنْ, عن وَلَدِهِ وَلَا مَوْلُودٌ هُوَ جَازٍ عَنْ وَالِدِهِ شَيْئًا so, O mankind, fear your Lord and fear a day when no father will avail his son, nor will a son avail his father at all. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth. So let not the worldly life deceive you. Do not get attached to this, to this life. It's a vanishing life. It's, you are not going to take anything with you from this life to the life after. You leave everything behind. Your children, your parents, your jewelry, your cars, your wealth. Nothing, you are not going to take anything with you except your deeds. So have zuhd of this dunya. Don't let this dunya keep you astray. Don't let that happen. So, وَفَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَاعِ what, what is it? It's they were happy in this dunya. So they, they wanted to enjoy this dunya. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, 
uh, has given people something to really be worried about. It's the life after. So when Allah said, وَفَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَاعِ So they rejoiced in the worldly life, in this vanishing life, while the worldly life is not. It's nothing compared to the hereafter except a brief enjoyment. So why would someone lose the Akhira for just a brief enjoyment? The enjoyment, the true enjoyment is that of the Akhira, of the life after, which is everlasting. So do not get deceived with this dunya. Do not let this uh, uh, vanishing dunya get into your heart. And also, do not make the, uh, the uh, affairs of this dunya in, in your heart so it hardens your heart. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تفرغوا من هموم الدنيا ما استطعتم فإنه من كانت الدنيا همه قسى قلبه وكان فقره بين عينيه ولم يعط من الدنيا غير نصيبه المكتوب له So whatever whoever makes this dunya his goal so first of all, just leave the worries of this dunya away. And whoever makes the world the, the, his goal, uh, Allah puts poverty right before his heart, right before his eyes. So what happens to him? What will, what will happen to this person? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disorganize his affairs. He will, uh, he will make him feel poor. And the world comes to him uh, as uh, he, he will be a slave to the world. So this is the one who gets attracted to this to this dunya and who is engaged in the in this life. But وَمَنْ كَانَتِ الْآخِرَةُ هَمُّهُ جَمَعَ اللَّهُ لَهُ أَمْرَهُ وَجَعَلَ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهُ وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا رَاغِمَ So Whoever makes the hereafter his goal, then Allah makes his heart rich. He organizes his affairs. And the world comes to him, dunya will serve him whether it wants or not. Sometimes you, you, you meet people in this dunya that uh, they, they are served by other people. People love them. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. And he facilitates this dunya to serve them. The people of this dunya to serve them. The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to serve them. And it's always said, Izhad fi dunya yuhibbuk Allah. Wazhad fi ma aydi nas yuhibbuk nas so be disinclined to, towards the world, Allah will love you. And be disinclined with what, whatever, with what people possess, then people will love you. Do not look at their, whatever they have, and do not just wish that you have it. Do not let them feel that you are envying them. No, this is only, a worldly matter. If it happens, khair. If it, if it didn't happen, then khair. 
سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said أتيت بمقالد الدنيا على فرس أبلق جاءني به جبريل عليه قطيفة من سندس I have been brought the keys to the treasures of this world on a horse with a saddle made from green piece of green silk Did that attract Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu No That did not attract his attention Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He chose to be an obedient thankful servant to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala than to be a king messenger So knowing Allah is the core of fearing him the stronger the servant's faith is and the greater his knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greater his fear of Allah will be so when someone knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when someone worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then his heart is filled with the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills this heart with divine light so we know that the heart the face is the reflection of what is in the heart so you feel his face the face is radiant that's because the heart is radiant it has a divine light inside it so these people those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they know that their love is not for this dunya it's for the akhirah and that's why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he was the most knowledgeable of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most aware of him. So he didn't care about the adornments of dunya. Dunya did not attract his attention. So you know that when he went in, up to the sky he saw all types of adornment in Jannah. His heart did not move a single, a single degree to the goal that he was going for. Dunya is vanishing. Do not get deceived with it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it. من كان يريد حرث حرث الآخرة نزد له في حرثه ومن كان يريد حرث الدنيا نؤته منها وما له في الآخرة من نصيب this is Surah Al-Shura ayah ayah twenty whoever desires the harvest of the hereafter we increase for him his harvest and whoever desires the harvest of this dunya we give him there of the of whatever he wants but what happens there is not for him any reward any share in the hereafter so in this dunya we are planting seeds these seeds are going to grow and then there will be harvest so whoever desires the harvest of the hereafter then allah will des will increase him for that he will increase his harvest but whoever his sight is just shortened his sight is just limited to this dunya he will have of course everyone who works he will have the result of his work so he will have the reward uh, of his work in this dunya but not in the akhira be careful be careful not to be deceived of the adornment of this dunya so get prepared for the akhirah how do we get prepared for the akhirah we want our heart to be free from all attractions of this dunya 
So we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to think of death. We don't know when death is, uh, is coming to our day, to, our, uh, to us, to our door. But we know that we are all going to die. No one is, no one, no one is given to live forever. No. Our lifespan is fixed. Someone will live a short life. Someone will live a long life. We want our life, whether short or long, to be filled with worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be filled with getting close to to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to be on the on the footsteps of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have always to think of death. When we think of death, then our hearts will get affected. We know that. We will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day. So we want to make sure that when we meet him, we will be ready for that meeting. We want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he will please us on the day after. So when he said, radiyallahu anhum, Allah is pleased with them, he continues it with waradu'an. They are pleased also with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? Because they found the reward that of their uh, whatever, whatever they did in their dunya. They believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were sure that there will be reward when they are patient to the uh, calamities that afflicts them in this dunya. Their hearts are not attached to anything in this dunya. So, think that after death, we're all going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as we mentioned, we have to be ready for that meeting. We have to get prepared. So we have to do our best when our deeds are being scaled on the day after, the good deeds will be will outweigh the bad deeds. So let's be of the believers group about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون. This is سورة الحشر آية 18. Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying, O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah. Whenever an ayah in the Quran starts with Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu O oh, you who have believed then we have to expect an order to be done or something that we have to abstain from and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying O oh, you who have believed believe, fear Allah he gives a, he goes on وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدٍ So let every soul look into what it has put forth for tomorrow. Is, is every soul ready to meet Allah? Are we of the souls, are, is our soul of this group of souls who is ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لغد. Just think of what you have done. Sayyidina Omar says, 
حاسبوا أنفسكم قبل أن تحاسبوا وزنوا أعمالكم قبل أن توزن لكم فاليوم عمل بلا حساب وغدا حساب بلا عمل So scale your deeds every day Why? Because in this dunya when you wake up in the morning then you have another chance to fix up what you have messed, messed up earlier. Today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just overwatching you. You are doing your best in this dunya. All your deeds, you're not going to be rewarded or punished for them in this dunya. You can do whatever you want. وَغَدًا حِسَابٌ بِلَا عَمَلٍ But be aware that tomorrow, when your deeds are being scaled, there is no another chance. So try not to be of the loser's group who would promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you give us another chance, then we will do our best. Then we will pay sadaqah. Then we will worship you, Ya Allah. But what would Allah say to them? Kalla. Innaha kalimatun huwa qailu. No. It's a word, it's a promise that he has, he has given. I have created you and I gave you the, your, the intellect. I sent you messengers to show you the correct, the right path and the wrong path. And you were free to choose whatever you want. So whoever follows the right path will be of the winner's group. But whoever follows the, the wrong path, then he will be of the evil group. Who will be of the people of Jahannam who will be of the people of uh, uh, those who will be punished on the day after. They did not follow the orders in dunya. So, they forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so he forgets them in the day, on the day after. So let our heart be ready for the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let our heart not being attached to anything in this dunya that will uh, make him go astray from the right path. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered those who believe to fear Allah and to let every soul look into what they have put forth for the for the future for the, for the hereafter why would he do that because he knows that what they are going to to do in this dunya allah is acquainted with what you do allah is asking people be careful so that when I punish people on the day after, they would not say, Ya Allah, you didn't give us a chance in the dunya. No, Allah has given a chance to everybody. But what did everybody do? What path did everybody take? Were they attached to the dunya? Did they lose their akhirah for the pleasures of dunya? Did they lose their akhirah to enjoy dunya? Or did they lose the uh, dunya to be rewarded in the everlasting life? Where do we stand? Ya Allah, we want you to be happy with us. Ya Allah, we want to please you on the day after. So, do not get attached to this dunya. 
Do not get deceived by the adornments of this dunya. We are all leaving it to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day. And until we meet next week, inshallah, I send my salam and your salam to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask you, Ya Allah, to keep us, to put us on his path that will lead to the high heavens. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.